Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Kristen Bandy, and today we're talking to Dr. Christopher Manbeck about Tourette syndrome. Dr. Manbeck is the pediat the director of the only pediatric Tourette syndrome focused program in the state. And when they started the clinic, it was there were no CBIP providers in Arkansas, and now it's one of the fastest growing clinics in our neurosciences center. Dr. Manbeck, welcome. Thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me. So we'll jump right in. What is Tourette syndrome? Sure, so um, really Tourette syndrome is, uh, encompasses tics. So you have movement tics and the most common focus on the face. So a lot of kids will just do this kind of squinting mm -hmm. uh, motion or they may do some facial movements. And then some sort of noise. So the most common noises that you'll hear would be something like sniffing or clearing their throat, coughing, things that a lot of time get mistaken for allergies or something like that. Sure. Um, so when you have one movement type of tick and one noise type of tick and it's been going on a year, you have Tourette's syndrome. Oh, really? That's the determining factor. So is that how it's diagnosed? They come in and then you watch them yeah, that's to basically, see if it sticks yeah, around? Yeah. Um, that's basically it, and it doesn't have to be constant. It doesn't have to be every day of the year. Just at some point in that year, it's a pattern. more than it's not, they're having. Oh, interesting. And so is Tourette syndrome common? It's extremely common. Um, if you look at the literature, you can see numbers all over the place. Average of all those is about 10% of kids will have a tick disorder in childhood. Um, that's probably about right. It may even be a little bit more. Judging from the number of patients I see, so pretty common, which I didn't Extremely realize. Common, yeah. Wow, is this something that a child will have for their lifetime? Most likely, no. Um, that's one of the really big things that I touch on when I have people come into clinic, is that this isn't something they have to deal with their entire life. Most of the time, it follows a course of starting about four or five, six years old, and then it just takes this slow progression up. Um, just kind of waxing and waning and then right around middle school time 10 11 12 that's when it's going to be most noticeable and then mm -hmm. after that it starts going down the opposite way so about 80 percent of kids um, when they've been asked in studies have said the ticks are gone by adulthood so that's really good just completely gone they don't notice any they don't other notice them at all wow so is it harmful to kids when they do have it most of the time, no. Um, it's not harming your brain, um, and it's not harming um, any, any body part um, during this. There are some times when ticks can you know, cause self-confidence issues, things like that, and that's harmful. Um, but in general, a lot of patients and families will say, is there anything wrong with my brain? Is this harming my brain? The answer is no. Your brain is perfectly normal. Can the ticks be painful? Is there a physical pain to the ticks or the movements? They can be. Um, ticks change and they evolve over time, but some can be um, painful. Um, one of the more common painful ones is just a rapid movement of your head, jerk to mm, the side, sure. one way or the other, and that can be painful for kids. Sure. And in those cases, that's when we decide, well, let's help you out a little bit. We can try medication or therapy, various things. So can you tell me a little bit about the treatment? You said medication and then there's... Yeah. So there are a lot of options for Tourette's syndrome. Um, so before we talk about options, it's important to understand that Tourette syndrome isn't just ticks. So the diagnosis is only ticks, but when you're really looking at a kid who has Tourette syndrome, you're looking at a huge spectrum of issues. So anxiety, ADHD, OCD, depression are all very common in Tourette syndrome. There's a lot of other mental health issues that go along with it too, but those are the big four. So whenever I see a kid in clinic and we decide we need treatment, if it's causing them problems, pain, whatever, we look at the big picture. Do you have anxiety? Do you have depression? Do you have OCD, ADHD? And then we decide medication based on that. Um, anxiety can be a big driver of tics. So if a mm -hmm. kid is really, really anxious, I have to deal with that. We have to right. treat that. Generally, that will make the tics better. Um, then we have therapy options. So we have CBIT, um, which is a therapy specifically for tics. Um, you get trained through the Tourette Association of America so right now we have five here in Little Rock who have been trained, and then one in Northwest Arkansas who has been trained for quite a while, but now I send her a lot more patients. So we have lots of options. And then we also have some hybrid therapies that Dr. Howell does for us. She's a psychologist that works with us. Um, so lots of options. Lots of options. And how does this affect school for kids that have Tourette syndrome? Well, so there, 
academically, these kids are exactly the same as everyone else. Um, so you're going to see the entire range. You know, we we'll have valedictorians, we we'll have people who struggle in school. Sure. So tics and Tourette syndrome itself doesn't affect your intelligence. It has nothing to do sure. with that. But you can imagine it can be really distracting. Let's say you're doing a time test and a kid's making noises, you know, mm -hmm. um, sniffing or coughing. Well, they may start to focus on that, which will make it happen more frequently. Or they may start to wonder if they're bothering their classmates. Before you know it, you've lost 10, 15 minutes and you've done no work. Right. And then you have to rush through the rest of the test. So it can be distracting. It can be distracting during lectures and those times. So for all the kids, we ask the family, go set up a 504 plan. And I give them a big, big packet of information to take to the school. Um, and so they just talk to the school, figure out how do we overcome these barriers to learning. Um, because the kids shouldn't be punished for something outside oh, sure. of their control. And a lot of times stress and anxiety can make the tics mm -hmm. worse. So it's just compounding on itself right. when exactly. they're going through that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's good that there's a plan for that when it does happen. So we discussed how it was diagnosed, but at what point would a parent, what would they see to make them think that they needed to get diagnosed? How do you distinguish between sniffles from allergies sure. and, and a potential Tourette diagnosis? Sure, so you know, um, if it's allergy related sniffles, you would expect it to improve with allergy medication. You would also expect it to be um, around when allergy season is Hi. Sure. So if it's year round or if you're noticing it doesn't respond to medications, it's not when they're spending a lot of time outside or whatever their allergy might be, um, then you kind of start thinking could it be a tick. Also ticks respond to someone paying attention to them, to stress, anxiety, the things we, that you just mentioned. So if you're noticing that the more you talk about it in front of the child, the more they do it, or the more stressed out they are, the more they do it, the, you know, when they're really tired they do it more. Then you start thinking, maybe it's not allergies, maybe it's a tick, something along those lines. I think it's one of those things that you don't, a lot of people don't know much about Tourette syndrome, mm -hmm. which is why we're here. So it, you probably don't even start to think about that kind of stuff until you're already at the doctor and right. trying to figure out why they have allergies year round. Exactly. I'm sure that happens a lot. It actually. does, it does. Yeah. <laughs> I would imagine. So I would like to know, what is a common misconception that you run into quite a bit with Tourette syndrome? There's a lot. So I think um, Hollywood and the media has kind of painted a picture oh, of what sure. Tourette syndrome is. And so people come in thinking that it's kids swearing and you know jumping around, really extreme tics. While those can be tics, those are pretty rare. The most common thing that we see in Tourette syndrome are mild things that most people would miss. You know, the eye blinking, the sniffing. Mm -hmm. Those are the most common tics. And most kids don't need treatment. Um, they can do fine without treatment. So I think just getting past that is important. And then remembering that this isn't a disability. This isn't something that the kid is abnormal or weird or something different. They're normal. All of these kids are normal. Tourette syndrome is common and it goes away. So I think getting them past that to realize they're just like everybody else. There's you know, thousands of kids just like you in the state of Arkansas doing the exact same thing you're doing, going through the exact same thing you are. Yeah. So. You mentioned that it peaks in middle school, which mm -hmm. is a terrible time yeah. to feel different right. than, than other people. Have you noticed that this affects their self-esteem or do they understand that it goes away and how, how does that affect their mental health when, when these things elevate? That's a great question. And so when they come to clinic, we focus on normalizing it, letting them know that it's going to go away and kind of getting them hopeful and knowing that it's okay. So it can affect self-esteem if they're constantly worried about it, constantly thinking they're different. And if they kind of start to um, shut down when it's brought up. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that surprised me most is that bullying isn't as prevalent yes. with this that I thought it would be. Generally, kids just want to know what, why you do that. And once you tell them, I found most of the time, 90, 95% of the time, they leave it alone. They'll even kind of have your back if someone else says something. But before, a lot of times before they come to see me, they're not sure what it is or they don't want to talk about it. They feel like they're not normal. And so they don't say anything or they ignore it. And then we start seeing more bullying and problems that way, which hurts their self-esteem. Um, so it can be a problem, but that's one of the things that we push when they right. see us is 
that we let's get past that this is normal you're normal you're gonna be all right and I think that's one thing that a lot of parents and kids say to me at the end of the visit is they feel so much better they feel relieved and so sure uh, answers are always helpful and having someone yeah. tell you hey this is totally normal so you brought up a good point about the bullying being mm -hmm. less so I've noticed in recent years that you know we're really on the anti-bullying mm -hmm. thing and it seems to be on the downside from what I can tell have you noticed um, there's there's a movement now online of teenagers older younger adults being more open with their differences mm -hmm. online and talking about it and finding their own little communities have you noticed a change in the way people feel about Tourette syndrome the teenagers themselves have you noticed a change in how they feel about it the last several years um that's a hard question because i've only been in attending for this is my third year oh, um, gotcha. and uh, this clinic is just two years old so it's hard to notice the difference between when i started and when i am right. now not long enough time but judging from my own teen years which were a million years ago because <laughs> i'm really old now um, yeah. and what the kids are coming in saying it does seem like we're more aware of differences and we're more accepting of differences right um, which is good and you know you bring up a good point there's a lot of um and even you know we're on facebook right now but there's a lot of facebook very social media outlets for the kids to connect with other kids just like them to see that they're not alone that sort of thing and that that also is one area where we're trying to help um help our kids connect is we're working on some family support groups right now. We're working on various other things where they can connect with others via Zoom or whatever since, you know, COVID has limited our right. ability to have them in one place at one time. It's it's shared experiences when mm -hmm. someone else has what you have and you can say, oh, I do that too. Mm -hmm. And that is so helpful. So these groups that you're putting together, when should they be ready to launch? I'm hoping um, the family support group, the beginning of 2022, um, we have two nursing, uh, APRN, nurse practitioner students, coming over from UAMS, and they've been working with um, with one of the, um, uh, honestly, I don't know her title. She's the vice president of something, I think. Um, we'll put it in the comments. We'll she's we'll awesome, though. Amber she's Jones. awesome. We'll put it um, in so the comments. She's working with them to put this together for us. That's their project, that, um, their like senior project for their program. So I'm hoping it'll be pretty soon. Well, that'll be amazing for the students here that have it. So what do you wish more people knew about Tourette's syndrome? I, you know, I wish they just knew that it was normal. I wish they yeah. knew that there was hope if things are not going well for them. You know, most of the time, ticks are mild. Most of the time, this isn't a problem. But there are a good number of kids who struggle with this, who mm -hmm. have ticks that are more severe, who are really anxious, really depressed. And so this is a burden on them and I wish that I, I wish that they all knew we have someone people who can help you know if I can't help you I have a, an amazing psychologist Dr. Howell mm -hmm. she can help you and she does a lot of these kind of hybrid therapies combining the CBIT with other therapy to help kids out you know if we can't help you together we can get you over to our psychiatrist down the road and they right. can help you out um, takes a village right? right exactly so we have a good team in place and if they need us, we're here. I think sometimes it's just they don't know we're here to help them. So where can we go to find more information about finding you when we need you? Sure, so um, the website, ACH's website, has a link to our, um, our department. To get into child neurology, you need a referral from your pediatrician or family medicine, whoever your primary care physician is. Um, and if, you know, if there are any PCPs or anyone out there listening or a family whose kids just having a really hard time, call our clinic or call your pediatrician let them know it's really bad right now you really need help sooner have them call us and talk to us and we, a lot of times we can figure something out um, whether it's just suggesting to the pediatrician start this until we can see them or we'll, we'll figure out a way to get you seen sooner yeah that's awesome we will link our website in the comments and then when we get those groups up and running we'll be posting about yeah. those as well well, Dr. Manbeck, thank you so much for joining us. Is there anything that we didn't cover? Um, no, I don't think so. Um, actually, you know, a lot of people are looking for information on what Tourette syndrome is, and they will find all sorts of things on the internet. Probably the best source of information about Tourette syndrome right now would be Tourette.org, T-O-U-R-E-T-T-E dot O-O-R-G. 
Um, that's the Tourette Association of America. They have a lot of information for families, for school, for um, kids. You can just kind of go and explore their site. And they have a lot of webinars that they've done with mm -hmm. very esteemed doctors that I saw last night when I was looking around. So very helpful site that we will also link in the comments. Yeah. Thank you so much for being sure. here. Thanks we appreciate you so much. We, I learned a lot. I hope you learned a lot as well. Thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you next time.